Hello everyone and welcome back to the MicroStation Visualization Video Series. My name is Steve Rick, Senior Consultant of Bentley Systems, and this video is the second installment in a three-part series on the Populate tool. In this video, we will be using Populate to randomly place trees in an area in the station model. To help us see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the backgrounds to white so we can see it a little bit better. Now let's do some trees. Over here, you see I have some cell libraries. Trees native, uh, trees not native, XFrog, people. So this is not just a regular cell library. This is a cell library for the populate command. So I can pick and choose what cells I want to populate with. For instance, the trees native. And if you click on the three dots just to the right, you can see here that the trees that I've chosen are typical for that area. Let me get rid of the trees not native, and then we'll create another one. Let's uh, go ahead and click on the green plus uh, with the paper by it. That's new library called Untitled One now, and we'll call it trees not native. There's no cells in it right now. We're going to come up here and click on the little snowflake with the plus sign. That's add file. And then we will fill it up. I've created these with delivered MicroStation cell libraries, Luminar T cell libraries, XFrog cell libraries, things of that nature. So I'm going to show you where those are at. Click on the three dots to bring up my cell library. These are regular cell libraries. And I want to show you this path here. It's on the C drive. If you've taken the normal installation, the out of the box installation of MicroStation, it will put these in this folder location. So in program data, Bentley, connect shared content, cells for Luminar T. And inside of here, you can see these are all cells for Luminar T. Now we've broken these down into different categories. So we're going to do plants. Just hit done. And here's all the plants. So let's kind of scroll down here. You can see there's a lot of plants in here. We're looking for some maples and some oaks and stuff like that. Here's a Norway maple. So let's take that one. I'm going to scroll down some more. There's a red oak right there. Make sure that you hold your control key down. If I don't hold my control key down and I select red oak, you see Norway maple gets unselected. Make sure you hold your control key down. White oak. Oh, let's do a willow. We got four trees selected. Now down here is the settings for this tree. And it's going to apply these settings to all of them. So I want 100% of the scale. The placement type is going to be center to center. Center of the trunk to center of the trunk. The other option I have here is edge to edge. If I do edge to edge, it's going to take into account the canopy. I want to go from the center of the tree to the center of the next tree. The cell gets rotated randomly, so it doesn't look like the same cell gets placed all over the place. The scale variation also will differ. I'm doing a 5% scale variation. So scale here and scale variation is a percentage, not a number. You hit OK there. It will populate our cell library with those four trees. Once you do this, you can see that it takes on all the settings that I have. And I'm going to make sure that I save that. If you get out of there and leave, it's not going to save that cell library and you have to recreate it. That's how you create the populate cell library. You have to do this. So we're going to get rid of that dialog box and we are going to come up here to trees native. We're going to say pick them randomly. I can click in here and see what trees I have in here. Remember if they're red, that means that the cell library is not being found. Random, we want alignment to be vertical. This time I'm going to paint the surface. And then I can tell it the spacing. How far apart do I want the trees? Two meters is not very far. That's going to maybe get trees on top of other trees, and that's not going to be good. 
I'm going to set this up to five meters. I'm going to enter a data point up top of the enclosed area and then let that bar go. And there's the first tree. And all I have to do now is I don't have to hold that left mouse button down. I just have to move my cursor across the screen and it will paint all the trees and then right click when I'm done. Now it's very important that you right click when you're done because if I move over to dismiss the dialog box, it's going to keep painting trees. You have to left click one more time to accept it. It did populate and it did work, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo these. And I'm going to show you the method that I really like to use as far as populate is concerned. It gives it a little bit more consistency. And that is the last icon here, populate in area. But I'm going to have to do one thing. Make sure that you have a level called trees and put your trees on that level. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my drawing workflow and I'm going to go to the place smart light. And I'm just going to draw an area that I don't want the objects to get out of. I don't want them close to that curve. That is a shape. So I'm going to go back to visualization and click on the populate command again. I'm going to do area this time. I've got trees native, random, vertical. Item spacing is going to be five meters. I might want to up that a little bit, but let's see what we got. So we're going to pick this shape to populate it, let it sit for a second, and there we go. Now that looks a little close together there. You can see that my outline is still highlighted. I haven't accepted it yet, so if I right-click, it should get rid of those trees. So I'm going to set this up to maybe, let's try 10 meters. Select the area again, and OK. That looks a little sparse to me. So I'm going to right click. Let's go to seven meters. Sometimes you have to do this. You have to get to play with it. That looks pretty decent. I'm going to keep that. If the area that I just populated is highlighted still, I haven't accepted it. So you have to left click to accept it. You see how the area that I had selected now turns back to green. That means that I've accepted the trees and they're good to go. The first thing I do is I get rid of that shape. Just delete it. This was using the Populate tool to place trees in the station model design. Thank you for watching. Please look for part three in this video series on using the Populate tool. I will see you next time in the next video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.